Welcome to the demonstration of the Java SE Advanced Management Console released in August of 2015. The Advanced Management Console enables desktop administrators to track and manage usage of Java across their organizations. This provides information like usage tracking details as well as a guided deployment rule set creator for running different versions of Java side by side on the same systems. New to this 2.0 release is the auto-detecting Windows agent that will assist in automatic configuration of this, these details across a wide user base. After logging in with your provided credentials, you'll be taken to the main screen showing all functionality available within the Advanced Management Console. The details in the middle are helpful, but the primary point of interaction is up near the top right. The Desktops tab shows who uses which version of Java based on their locally installed agent. The Java Usage tab shows usage tracking information, such as which applications, applets, or web start programs were used within that organization and how often were they used. The Installers tab helps customize the Enterprise MSI installer so that you can keep settings across different Java upgrades. The Rule Sets tab helps track which deployment rule sets have been rolled out across the user base and which applications will be run with which Java versions across those clients. This helps manage compatibility across a wide variety of applications in a large organization. Now I'm going to click on the Desktops tab to see my users. The table shows a list of managed systems running the Advanced Management Console agent on their Windows system. These agents make it easier to configure clients and usage tracking and rollout rules. I'm going to click on an individual user to see details about what that particular user is running on their system. Once I click that, I can see that this user is running the latest Java 8 Update 40 from the list installed onto their system. Looking further at the details of Java that they have installed, I can see an older version of Java that was installed and bundled as part of a local application on that system called CrashPlan. This demonstrates how users may have versions of Java available even if they don't have them installed. Looking down further at the command queue, I can see the way that systems will interact with the Advanced Management Console to do things like download updated deployment rule sets. You can view details about which applications are in use by accessing the Java Usage tab up near the top. This will also display information such as what types of applications are in use and where are those applications to help you identify which applets or standard desktop server applications are using different versions of Java. If you want to narrow down by things like type of application, you can select those options over to the right. One improvement in the new 2.0 version of the Advanced Management Console is that it tracks both web and non-web applications. I'm going to remove the selection now and open up the Deployment Rule Set section in order to demonstrate how you can automatically run applications and control compatibility with different versions of your local Java installation at the same time. The Rule Sets tab provides the ability to act on the usage tracking information, creating whitelists of applications. As I click to run the Deployment Rule Set tool, the functionality is very similar to the 1.0 version of the Advanced Management Console. By entering my login information, I'm taken to a screen where I can interact with the Deployment Rule Set creator and manage my whitelist and compatibility. The Deployment Rule Set tool opens to the home screen, providing information about what you can do with the tool. The Apps tab shows useful information about Java-rich internet applications launched through a browser, such as applet and web start applications. The Runs column all the way to the right will help me identify how beneficial this application is to my users by identifying how many times this application has been run. Right-clicking an individual application, I can go to create a new rule. The first thing that I need to do with an individual rule is to provide a name. The name should be something beneficial and human-readable about the application. I can then choose a default action, such as Run with the latest available JRE. 
This allows the application to run automatically on managed systems without prompts. Choosing another application, I can take similar action. By providing a different name to describe what that application does, I can choose another rule action, such as run, and use the latest available JRE. Many organizations need different versions of Java at the same time. By choosing a different application, I'm going to create a specialized rule that runs this application using a specific older version of Java. I'm going to provide a beneficial human readable name first, and then I'm going to choose a rule action of force run. The version that I'm going to choose is a specific product level because I want to specify that this application is known compatible with an older version of Java 6. In this case, I'm going to choose Java 6 Update 38. Once you have several rules created, you'll want to go to the Rules tab and create a rule set. A rule set provides the configuration to clients of how to operate with different rules. By selecting multiple rules inside of the Rules tab, I can drag them over into my rule set, in this case, main rule set, as a way of exporting that to my clients. The Relationships tab identifies how this rule set will perform based on my tracked application. In this case, I have three rules designed to target three different applications. We see the green and yellow, green indicating run, and yellow indicating that there's no effect on that tracked application. After verifying my rule, the next step is to perform an export so that it can be deployed onto managed clients. By using a local file, I do not have to expose the signing cryptographic key used for the signature of this deployment rule set. Once I click export, the file is saved onto my local file system. The deployment rule set then needs to be pushed out onto managed desktops. Looking at the desktops tab, you'll see the push deployment rule set section. Now the way that these desktops are managed is through that Java agent that periodically checks in. You can obtain this agent through the configuration tab via the download link. There's no expectation that users download this themselves, rather it should be downloaded and pushed out via an automation tool such as Microsoft SCCM or Marimba. Customization instructions appear inside the AMC 2.0 documentation and involve updating an AMC user.properties file as well as installing the local agent via a command. By using the Advanced Management Console, desktop administrators can monitor and manage Java usage across their organization and benefit from the automatic configuration on Windows clients. For complete details about the Advanced Management Console, please see the product page and its related documentation.